I'm an archaeogeneticist in the MacDonald Institute for Archaeological Research at Cambridge. This means that I study the human and animal past using techniques such as population genetics and ancient DNA analysis. I'm interested in the relationship between people and the natural environment, and in particular, in finding out how, through prehistory and into more recent periods, we have altered a range of species to fulfil our needs. Based on archaeological evidence from sites such as Botai in Kazakhstan, we think humans may have domesticated horses as long as 7,000 years ago. Just to put this in context, cattle and sheep were domesticated around 10,000 years ago. One strand of my work is a collaborative project on the spread of the chariot, that is, two-wheeled horse-drawn vehicles associated with speed and warfare, across Central and East Asia during the second and first millennia BC. The earliest archaeological evidence of chariots occurs in the Urals and Turkey at the beginning of the second millennium BC. Subsequently, chariots, along with horses, are found buried, often with fabulous grave goods, across Central and East Asia, up until the end of the first millennium BC. At around this time, chariots are replaced by wagons, four-wheeled horse-drawn vehicles built for moving whole communities, and we see the growth of what's called equine pastoral nomadism. My role in this project is to study both living horse populations and analyse the bones of horses found at archaeological sites from the second and first millennia BC. These include horses from Sintashta in the Urals and Botai in Kazakhstan. At the Department of Biochemistry and the MacDonald Institute for Archaeological Research in Cambridge, we are able to analyse the genetic code of archaeological horses contained in tiny samples of bone, using techniques which purify and amplify ancient DNA. The results of these tests show us connections between living and ancient horses and allow us to explore their past management by humans, including the way that they had been bred. By comparing the DNA of horses from prehistory with DNA taken from living horses, we can work out where today's horses came from. Horses represent a real challenge as they travelled long distances with those who owned or traded them, far greater, for example, than pigs or sheep. And so it's not surprising that living horse populations show extensive genetic mixing. In 2008, I became involved in a three-way project with the Royal Veterinary College and the Natural History Museum to see what we could learn about the DNA contained in the skeletons of elite historic thoroughbred horses held by these institutions. Among the skeletons of the horses we looked at were those of one of the most successful thoroughbreds of all time, Eclipse, and those of a horse who supposedly won the 1880 Epsom Derby, Ben Dor. We sample bone powder from historic skeletons using a fine drill and a freezer mill with liquid nitrogen. We dissolve the bone powder and any historic DNA associated with it in salt, surfactant and enzyme solution for a number of days. We then remove all the debris, leaving pure historic DNA in solution. Then we use a range of techniques including PCR and sequencing to amplify and read the DNA sequence. We study highly variable sections of the mitochondrial DNA and genes which describe physical traits such as coat colour. Working collaboratively was a unique opportunity to pull together a range of lines of evidence to explore a single question. Our research involved not just laboratory tests to determine genetic makeup, but also a close reading of contemporary sources, such as newspaper reports, the records of horse breeding in the general stud book, and skeletal morphology and stable isotope analysis. We were fortunate in that many of the most informative archives are held in the Cambridge University Library, which has the treatise written by Vial de saint bel following his autopsy of Eclipse, including his detailed drawings. These archives are a window on a world at the very beginning of the development of veterinary medicine in the UK, as saint bel went on to found the Royal Veterinary College, the first institution dedicated to animal health. All modern thoroughbred horses trace their pedigrees to three stallions imported into England in the 17th century and 18th century, and to a large number of foundation mares, mostly from British native horse breeds. In the late 19th century, racing shifted its focus from two-horse, head-to-head contests over long distances to the multiple horse sprints over short distances that we see today. Thoroughbred horses are elite athletes but are notoriously prone to life-threatening genetic diseases such as brittle tendon syndrome. 
During this project, we've developed the technology to be able to throw light on the historic instances of these genetic diseases. In the last 10 years, we've made huge strides in understanding the genetic code, which means that we can now undertake the kind of studies we only dreamed of. We can analyze the DNA from archeological horses and say what color they were, or whether they were selected for speed or stamina. It's been an exciting collaboration that has shown us that the relationship between humans and horses is unique among domestic animals. We've come up with some answers, but also, just as importantly, many questions. These are relevant not only to understanding the past, but also in helping to shape the future. For example, our results will inform the conservation and protection of Central and East Asia's disappearing native horse populations.